you've been watching the news you know that uh, Whitney Houston just died but since I have no opinion on Whitney Houston or her music or anything in general we're gonna talk about the separation of church and state today so anyway so there was a big thing in the news last week about a provision of the Affordable Health Care Act which is also known as aka um, Obamacare right and it's supposed to kick in this year a provision that would require hospitals to provide um, access to contraception and if they don't have if they don't have it at their hospital like if for you know if it conflicts with their religious views or whatever then to refer a patient to another place that actually does have contraception right and so this is something that um, a lot of the uh, religious institutions, religious hospitals and shit like that out there are, are kind of like up in arms about, you know, especially a lot of Catholic hospitals, right? Which is kind of ridiculous because, you know, it's something like, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, technically the Catholic Church is against contraception, but like 99% of all Catholics use it anyway, so big fucking, big whatever. And, uh, you know... So this came up on, on uh, one of the sites that I go to to talk about this kind of thing is actually um, Gaia Online, <laughs> right? And this came up. Uh, don't ask what a guy my age is doing on uh, Gaia Online. You know, what can I say? I like anime. But anyway, so, uh, so this came up on the forums there, and somebody made a post which was a, a copy-paste from an action alert, you know, these... And if you don't know what that is, it, an action alert, it's like one of these email things that that conservative websites and shit send out whenever there's, you know, something like this and they want you to go sign a petition or to call your congressman or whatever, right? And this was like a, a copy-paste from like um, some like, you know, church or whatever, you know, action alert, you know, which basically it was spreading all kinds of ridiculous bullshit about this provision, you know saying that it was going to require this, you know, the state was going to mandate abortion and sterilization, right? Which was just total fucking bullshit. It had, like, no basis in fucking reality, right? But these things never really do. I mean, it, it always kind of amazes me how, like, you know, an entire... How people fall for this stuff when they, when they get an email that says some shit like, you know, your senator is a baby killer or whatever. It's like, how do people just not verify these things? I mean, anyway... So it was all total fucking lies, but, and this, this was, somebody made a post on this, and I, I responded to their post to the effect of, uh, my post was essentially saying that I doubt that any of this is in the bill, but if it is, I support it. That's what I said, right? And uh, so the meat of the discussion seemed to be going in the direction that uh, this provision violates the separation of church and state, which it probably does, but the way I see it, personally, is that it's the religious institutions out there that are continuously attempting to cross that line, okay? You know, the churches and the religious people and the fucking, you know, religious right-wing think tanks and shit like that, you know, like the fucking Eagle Forum and the Heritage Foundation and all those other, you know, and, and focus on the family, you know, these, these ministries which are run like corporations, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, they, they seem more, um interested in like you know making a profit than actually spreading the word of god but whatever you know and instead of like actually attending to their flocks and and you know helping people and feeding the homeless and, and crap like that that it, you know it actually says in the bible that you're supposed to do they seem more interested in like getting money for themselves <laughs> right anyway it's it's these types of corporate churches that seem to be the ones that are continuously pushing this Line. They're, they're pushing against the, the separation of church and state. You know, they're the ones that are trying to outlaw gay marriage, you know, and trying to ban evolution and trying to force creationism in public schools or to get rid of, like, fucking sex ed 
or like you know they try to fucking ban rock music or like violent movies or like or um, violent video games right or online pornography you know it all comes from these fucking people you know they, the churches they pay zero fucking taxes right but then they turn around and they want tax breaks for like their fucking stupid ass amusement parks right and then you know and then they they want the state like to go to their charities and shit but then they turn around and they protest when someone wants to build a mosque on their own fucking land in new york and it's just bullshit you know and it's, and it's like these people and they're religious people and they're bullshit fucking culture war right the problem is is that you know i mean i made a video about this last week you know the culture war and all that but the problem is is that it's like a one-sided war right and it's it's fucking where we are the ones being assaulted you know that everyone else in the world who doesn't give a fuck about this kind of thing like day in and day out the religious people are making their assaults in this fucking in their own little culture war right so as far as i you know my my position is fuck them okay and it's it's time for them to defend their fucking position for a change okay because fuck these people you know so I, I hope that this actually like goes up to court and you know what i hope it gets struck down okay because that'll just strengthen that wall between church and state just a little bit more if they bring this up and they say that the state can't mandate this then it sets a precedent okay and that's what i want i want precedents being set saying that the state and church are separate okay but anyway so that's my position on the whole thing right you know and one of the guys came on there you know i, I typed all this stuff essentially a little less eloquent than right now but anyway i tend to use a lot of f words and crap like that when i you know, make fun of right-wingers on the internet, but anyhow, so, um, after I explained all this, a guy came on and he posted a response to me, which I found kind of amusing, right? To each topic you've mentioned is an entirely irrelevant discussion which I feel no discernible reason to address. Regardless, emotional reasoning does not provide a sufficient excuse to deny the principle of a nation's existence. If you believe liberty is righteous, then the terms of liberty should be infinitely acceptable no matter the situation. You should not be at odds with any ideal in such a way that it would strip you of integrity so long as you are dealing with any affairs of legal importance. So the first part of this guy's comment I really couldn't give a shit about, you know, um, basically saying that, you know, the nation's existence is, is the separation of like, you know, church and state and liberty. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, right? That's probably true. I don't know. But it's the second part here that kind of got my interest up a little. And that's when he said, if you believe liberty is righteous, then the terms of liberty should be infinitely acceptable, no matter the situation, right? And that's a load of fucking crap, okay? Now, I've heard people say this kind of thing before, you know, mainly from, like, right-wingers, but, you know, there's also people on the left that say this kind of thing too, right? You know, and it's this idea that liberty is, you know, is, is something that, like, in, it's inherently, you know innate in every human being and like you know and the state has no right to enforce their will on anyone right and you know your 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 right to swing your arm ends at my nose and shit like that right as long as you know it's the idea that as long as what you do doesn't hurt somebody else then you should be allowed to do it right and it's like you know for the most part yeah it sounds that kind of thing when you say that it actually sounds like something you would agree with right but if you actually fucking think about it it's not really okay I mean, kind of, sort of, I mean, I could, I, it's, I don't know, like, and the idea is that, like, okay, you know, first off, very few of our actions actually do, like, only affect us, you know, very, most of our actions that we do affect other people out there in one way or another, you know, and even, this is even true, like, if you were to take, like, what would normally be called, you know, um, very little things, you know, things that would be considered victimless crimes or things like, uh, you know, pollution, stuff like that, you know, and they don't, and at first when an individual does it, it doesn't seem to hurt anybody, right? But when you take into the effect, the aggregate over an entire population, then you start to see the harm, okay? So for instance, like, um, if you're using an aerosol, right? You know, you're freshening up your house because last night you had like, you know, whatever, a big party and lots of weed and shit like that. It smells. And so like you're freshening your house up and you like to use aerosol. You're not really hurting anybody. Right. But, you know, the air, you know, the, the fluorocarbons in that aerosol spray, the, the chlorofluorocarbons or whatever they're called, you know, they go towards depleting the ozone layer. Right. So 
you, your one little event that you did, freshening your house, isn't hurting anybody, really. But the aggregate effect of everyone, of a population, if everybody used these aerosol things, then we would have no ozone layer, okay? Then you see what I'm saying? You, then you start to see the harm in it. It's like, well, one person does it, it's not a big deal. Five million people do it, then yes, it is a big deal, okay? And there needs to be some regulation on that. And um, you can you can actually extend this this idea to apply towards lots of different things. You know, uh, seatbelt laws. That's another thing that right wingers are always mad about. You know, why should I have to wear seatbelts? Should be my choice. Well, you know, it. Yeah, it's you personally. If you get in a car accident and you die, that's fine. You know, nobody gives a fuck. But if you know, 10 million people a year die because of that, then something should be done. Okay. You know, I mean it. it this is how, I mean, and whether you agree with this or not, you know, you can't really deny that it makes logical sense, okay? It's like, you know, helmet laws, seatbelt laws, you know, um, pollution, stuff like that, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, you know, a society has, you know, our society at least, has um, a mandate to look out for the general welfare of its people, right? You know, safety, and that, and as far as me personally, I believe that includes safety. I believe it includes things like this, you know, safety regulations and, and seat belts and, you know, the FDA and making sure that food that you buy in a grocery store isn't going to kill you, that kind of shit, right? It's perfectly fucking acceptable for a state to make laws about this kind of thing, right? But, you know, let's even take other, I mean, some people would say, okay, that makes sense, but what about, you know, my other victimless crimes? You know, you say, things like prostitution is a victimless crime, you know, or, or uh, pornography is a victimless crime. It's not even a crime, really. I don't think so, but, you know. You know, and you could go, okay, well, all right, I could say that, you know, it should, maybe the terms of liberty here should be a little bit wider, but, you know, infinite? Not really. I mean, I would actually argue that nobody believes that the terms of liberty are infinitely acceptable. Nobody actually fucking believes that, right? Like, People say that kind of thing because it sounds good and righteous, but if you really fucking think about it, it it's total bullshit, you know, like, you know, uh, what would you say about children having sex with adults? What would you say about that? You know, should that be allowed to happen, right? Should a child, you know, liberty be infinitely acceptable in that situation, you know? What about, uh, you know, a child's infinite liberty to smoke crack, okay? like. You know, who, who are you to say that they can't do it? You know, they want to do it. They're not hurting anyone. It's a victimless crime, right? Why are you, you know, why is that illegal? Why Why do we prevent, you know, why do we as a, society, as a society decide that children should not be allowed to smoke crack? You know, what about fucking cannibalism? Okay, like, should we be allowed to eat other people as long as it's, like, consensual? You know, like, what if there's a guy that went off and paid people to, like, paid him a hundred bucks to chop their legs off and he, like, ground it up into beef and sold it and stuff and it was, like, a fucking operation? Like... You know, it's consensual. Who are you to fucking, like, stop that, right? You know, what about showing hardcore pornography during Saturday morning cartoons? You know, who are you to say that people shouldn't be allowed to have sex with children and smoke crack while fucking simultaneously chowing down on somebody's thigh bone and shit? You know, on a Saturday morning when fucking All Anal Tip fucking Part 7 is on after the Smurfs. I mean, is it in those, you know, is this infinite? Should liberty really be infinite or is it... In these particular situations that you actually agree that the terms of liberty are not infinitely acceptable all right it's bullshit okay the whole thing's fucking bullshit I mean in real life any sane person realizes that in order to run a society right liberty cannot be infinite whatever the fuck that means okay you know those might sound like those things I just said they might sound like ridiculous examples and you know they are right but it's because the entire fucking argument is ridiculous, okay? And everybody knows it. And it's just, it's one of those things that people say on the internet because it sounds good. But in real life, it's just, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's complete bullshit, you know? It's a fucking sign at a protest is what it is. Now, anyway, so the question becomes, where does it all end? Okay, you know, if you believe the state, like I do, has the state... If you believe the state has a mandate to provide for the general welfare of its citizens, right, and thus should be capable of passing laws like this that curtail these types of personal victimless crimes and other types of behavior which have an aggregated negative effect on society, right, then where does that mean? Where does that end? Where does that mandate end? You know, when does the state cross the line from, from providing for the general welfare and then enter totalitarianism, you know? And uh, personally, I think it's when 
you know, I think it ends when you it comes to choices of personal morality, right? However, the state should try to remain neutral in those types of situations, okay? Like, one of the things I firmly believe is that you can't legislate morality, you know, like, uh, I got, um, this, the, the right-wingers are t constantly trying to ban abortion, right? And the thing is, is if you were to outlaw it in the United States, at least, it would still happen. It would just be, like, illegal abortions that are unsafe, and many women would end up, like, you know, infected and possibly die because of it, and the number of actual abortions would only go down in so much that people would not be able to run out and just get one immediately, but it would still happen, and it would, the effect would just be worse, you know? And, um, but, you know, the thing is, is that there's also a law in the United States that says that, um, it prevents any federal dollars from going towards providing abortion, right? So it should be legal, but the state doesn't have to pay for it, right? And it's because, you know, whether I, um, you know, I actually agree with that, right? Even though I'm like pro-abortion, I actually agree with that law because, you know, we live in, a, we live in the United States, it's a fucking, it's a democracy, it's a representative democratic republic, all right? Fuck you people, fucking libertarian assholes, anyway. But you know, it's a democracy, right? And you know, many people in the country are anti-abortion, right? And, you know, these people, they don't want their, they don't want any of their money going towards um, paying for abortions, you know, whatsoever, right? And I see nothing wrong with that, you know? And it's like, well, then that's fine. They don't, they pass this law that says that no tax dollars can go to pay for abortions, and I see nothing wrong with that law, right? But I also see nothing wrong with adding a caveat that says that any institution that doesn't provide an abortion that takes federal dollars has to refer a patient who wants one to a service that does. I see nothing wrong with that either, okay? The state should remain neutral as much as possible in these situations, right? And, but the truth is, you know, it's, these are difficult questions, okay? And it's, you know, a 20 minute, 15, 20 minute YouTube video is not gonna be able to answer these things. This is why we have courts. This is why we have, you know, the Supreme Court, right? And we have state courts, right? And all these things because when a law gets passed and then, you know, people argue about it, that's what that's what democracy is all about. You know, you pass a law, you want something, other people don't agree with it, right? They take it to court, right? And then the people that we, you know, appoint to be the fucking judges and stuff make judgments on it, right? And we trust in their judgment because they're supposed to be experts on this kind of thing, even though you know, half the Supreme Court isn't, you know, that's a different, that's a, that's a subject for a different video. But anyway, that's how the system works, and I see nothing wrong with the system the way it is, you know. But to turn around and say that because, you know, I support something like this, you know, like, I mean, to say that it denies the founding principle of our nation's existence because I actually support, like, you know, the state, like, being able to regulate this kind of thing you know, that's a load of fucking crap, alright, and anybody who says that is just a moron, it's total fucking bullshit, so, anyway, folks, I'm out of here, adios.